So which is better, the BlackBerry Z10 or the iPhone 5? Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video, we're gonna compare both of these phones. Let's get to it. These devices look entirely different. The BlackBerry Z10 is made for business, while the iPhone 5 is more dainty and good looking and also fragile. We found in our durability report uh, that the iPhone 5 is especially susceptible long term, we're talking three or four months, to scratches, dings, dents, bruises, and all that kind of stuff if you're not using a case, especially this chamfered edge, which is what really makes people fall in love with the iPhone 5, I think. Uh, but it is so susceptible to getting beat up very, very badly. Now, the Z10 is a totally different device. It's made for productivity, for 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 life, and so it's made out of entirely plastic, whereas the iPhone 5 is glass and metal, um, and it feels totally different. In hand, it feels more solid. It feels like something uh, that's not going to slip out of your hand, and if it does slip out of your hand, you're not going to cry about it, uh, because this device is more uh, resilient. So on the back here, we've got a soft touch plastic with a nice dimpled texture, which just makes it feel awesome in hand. You know, some people say that the Z10 looks like the iPhone 5. Well, what they really mean to say so the Z10 looks like the back of the iPhone 5. Uh, and it's not that big of a resemblance. We have these strips on the top and the bottom, but the differences really stop there. Overall, the Z10 is nondescript. It really isn't a looker, but that's okay. I think it's meant for business. It's meant to take away the distraction of chamfered edges and metal textures and all that stuff and just give you a functional device that feels good in the hand. Over here on the side, we've got micro USB and the ability to do an output to an HDMI capable television or projector. We've got a volume rocker and BlackBerry's quick actions button, and here at the top is the power standby button. One of the interesting things that you can do on the Z10 that you can't do on the iPhone 5 is unlock the display by swiping up from the bottom. Now both of these are turned off right now, so it's not going to work, but I'm going to show you that in a sec. And of course on the iPhone 5 we've got everything in its iPhone-y place. On the back we've got 8 megapixel cameras on both capable of doing 1080p video. We can say without question that video and photos look much much better taken with the iPhone 5. You'll, you can check out our full Z10 review for camera samples if you want. Both have an LED flash there. In terms of thickness, the Z10 is definitely thicker, taller, and wider. Overall, the iPhone 5 is more slender in hand, and it feels smaller and more lightweight, uh, but again, the Z10 feels like it's ready for a day of action. Now, before we talk about specs and boot up a little bit on availability, uh, the BlackBerry Z10 will be available on all four carriers very soon. We're filming this in March, and around March or April, it should be available. The iPhone 5, of course, is available on all carriers, carriers except for T-Mobile. So let's start these up and see which gets on first. One, two, three... Geronimo. Okay, and some life has occurred here, and let's see which of these devices turns on more quickly. Now, in terms of specs, they're kind of similarly specced in a way. Uh, as mentioned, their cameras are the same. Uh, they've both got, they both have a dual core uh, CPU. The BlackBerry Z10 has two gigs of RAM. The iPhone only has one gigabyte of RAM. Onboard on board storage, that's a funny thing to say, is 16 gigabytes on the Z10, and your choice of 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes on the iPhone 5, but the Z10 gives you a micro SD expansion, and it also allows you to swap the battery. Okay, the iPhone 5 was first, the Z10 is going to be second, and let's just show that. Built for business, of course, so you can swap out your battery if you're doing a cross-country flight, you're watching video, you can take out the battery, put in a new one, and we've got a slot for a micro SIM card, so you can expand the memory on the Z10. Okay, so we've jacked brightness up to 100% on both devices, we've turned off auto brightness, and what you can tell right away is that the screen on the Z10 is warmer. Some people like warmer screens, some people don't. It's really up to you. Now, these are very different screens, but they're similarly sized. We've got a four inch, 1136 by 640 display here on the iPhone 5. That's 326 PPI. The Z10 beats the iPhone 5 in terms of PPI, if that's something that you're looking at, with a 1280 by 768 resolution, 4.2 inch screen, makes for a PPI of 355. Can you tell the difference between the two in terms of PPI? Not really. They're both extremely crisp and they look really, really good. Now, software couldn't be more different on both of these devices. The Z10 has the new BlackBerry 10 operating system, which actually takes some cues from the iPhone's operating system. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if we swipe to the right, this is the main home screen. If we swipe to the right, these are where your icons live and you can make folders and stuff. On the iPhone, of course, back in, I don't know, 2007, they introduced this idea of tap and hold and the little jiggle, right? Watch this, tap and hold and 
Pulsate. Okay, not a jiggle, but it's a Pulsate. This is definitely inspired by the iPhone 5. And like you can do on really all platforms, you can tap and hold an icon, drag it on top of another, and you can create a folder. And when you're done, you just tap, you just tap. But folders are kind of weird on the Z10. They are full screen, they're up in your face, uh, whereas on the iPhone 5, they kind of just fold down, which is a nice touch. Okay, now let's compare web browsing. Always very important here. We're going to open up Safari. Now to get to the web browser on the Z10, we swipe over to the app pane here. I've got browser up here at the top, so I'm going to click Safari here and browser at the same time. One, two, three, boom. And got there faster on the iPhone 5. Now here on the Z10, uh, what you have is sort of this quick dial interface, which is always nice to see. Let's go to pocketnow.com on both and see what's up. We've got the address bar on the bottom here, and here's something interesting. The keyboards are very different uh, between these two devices. It looks so nice on the Z10. It kind of looks like a real hardware QWERTY keyboard with these metal strips in between. So we'll go to pocketnow.com here. Okay, and they're both going not exactly the same time, but we'll do an official speed test in a sec. Moving around the page, both of these, I can tell you, have very, very good web browsers, but which is faster? Let's see, desktop version, one, two, three, go. And we're waiting for the progress bar here in the iPhone 5 finish first. And we'll wait for the Z10 to finish loading the final images. And let's scroll down the page. We don't want to see any white space if we flick quickly. And we don't. iPhone 5 has a, a slower way of scrolling. Let's pinch to zoom C, which clears up text faster. iPhone 5 a little bit faster. The, uh, the Z10's having some problem with Typekit fonts. A lot of websites these days, including PocketNow, use custom fonts with Adobe Typekit, and it's not converting it. Uh, Windows Phone 7.5 and 7 had the same problem uh, in Internet Explorer. Not that big of a deal, but it makes some websites like The Verge and Engadget and PocketNow look a little bit weird. Uh, so let's click on a link and see what it's like to load up this PocketNow daily video. That's fascinating. Okay, so we've got a video here ready to go and a video here ready to go. Let's see which loads up the video first. One, two, three, go. Did that work? Get ready for the Samsung Galaxy S with the number four says Samsung. The HTC One wins the best mobile in the world that I've ever seen. We wrap up the and there we go. Two videos playing. Video is slightly larger here on the Z10, of course, because it's a larger screen. They both look very good. On the Z10, it's definitely a little bit warmer, uh, so Jaime looks more tan than he usually does. <laughs> look at that. That's funny. Uh, but both playback video very, very smoothly. And let's get out of here. Now, if someone were to ask what's good about BlackBerry 10, I would say messaging. And this is why the BlackBerry is really good at messaging, something that the iPhone does not do. From any screen, and by the way, the video is still playing, you swipe up from the bottom, if you do it the right way, you swipe up from the bottom, and you begin to see your notifications in the BlackBerry hub. If you swipe up a little more and to the right, you can start to peek into your, into your BlackBerry hub, which is where all of your Twitter and Facebook status and updates come through and all of your emails fall into one place and it's a really awesome way to really see everything that's going on in your life and of course if you go over here to the hub uh, or to the listing before the hub you can drill into specific areas but from any screen uh, whether you're on Facebook or Twitter or the New York Times and you just want to see if you have some messages and what they're what they're looking like you just do a little swipe and then you can swipe back and go back to the home screen through that multitask UI. But besides that, that's really it in, in terms of what makes BlackBerry 10 um, awesome. Right now, it's sparse in terms of the app selection. Um, and we are trying to answer the question, why the Z10? Because, of course, the iPhone 5 has a an app selection that is really second to none. It's still slightly better than what you get on Android phones today. Uh, so the Z10 is a great phone. Uh, if you want some rugged hardware, a great typing experience, the best email experience on any device, great security features, and a device to just get stuff done. But that's not exactly true because in order to get stuff done, you need apps for everything, all of your stuff. And the Z10 
just does not have it. And right now we cannot recommend the Z10. So if you're comparing it against the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5 is a mature product that can just do so much more. The Z10 has promised, make no mistake about it, but right now it's unfulfilled. So which do you think is better? Which device would you rather carry as your daily driver? The email friendly, messaging friendly Z10 or the more refined, more mature iPhone 5? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching. That's it for now.